Hey guys, Penadaily here, and welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania. Or Castlevania, I did it again. Let's play A <laughs> Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. So, checking our prep right here. We've got three potions and a fairy, and we're going to go off and deal with level six. So we get the duck. The only way to get to level six is through, interestingly enough, position six on the duck. That's the only way up here. And if you pick up that block, you get to warp into the misery mire. Now, there's a couple interesting things here in the mire before we actually take on the, ow, <sighs> dang it. Before we actually take on the dungeon itself. First of all, if you come up here and head into this room, which of course is the Dark World counterpart of the western entrance that you came out of to get your heart piece, if you come here and push that up and that over, you get a piece of heart and 20 rupees. Every little bit helps, right? And we come through there, and I have no idea how that got hung up. But if we come across here, will that work? No. If we come across here into this place, there is a fairy fountain. So we get, you know, healed up, which is nice. Now, as I said, some people come to this place before they come to level five because there's all sorts of interesting things. Well, basically because you can use the dungeon item here to bypass level five, but Life. I really, really don't want to deal with that kind of mess. So, you stand roughly here, I think. Let's see if it worked. Yes! And now we're up on this ledge. Lift that rock, head down, and you can pretty much go through these in any way you want, I think. Just keep pushing them, and sooner or later, you get another piece of heart. There's only two more left, and we won't be able to get them until basically, like, practically, well, the next dungeon, actually. So, let's go through here. And... Alright, so now that we've got both pieces of heart, we can deal with the dungeon itself. Watch out for the worms that come in and out of the water. They're worse than the little fake Zoras, really. So we come up here, and you see, whoop, right there, there is a mark. It looks like the Ether Medallion. And if you looked around, you'd find some place that tells you the only way to open up Misery Mire is to clear the clouds away. So, we use that. It flickers a little, and boom. And the Misery Mire is open. Now, you can actually come to this dungeon. Like I said, you can do this one right after level one if you want, even. Even though it is a little difficult to get across this without the hookshot. You can do a thing where you charge into the rock. And the, the hit will knock you back across the pit. But it's so hard to do the positioning, uh, I don't think it's worth it, and I'm not going to waste half my life showing you. So here we have everybody's favorite assholes, the whiz robes. Yeah, if you guys have played Zelda 1, you remember just what, what a pain in the neck these guys are. They're not as bad in this game, thank God. They, for one thing, there's only one type. There aren't red ones and blue ones both and they don't hit quite as bad. And they all have the attack pattern of the original red whiz robes, which is they sit they you know sit in place, phase in, shoot at you and then phase out. So, if we come in here, first of all, we see you know, we can get one of those guys and get a fairy if we need to. If we come in here, we see this and course there's yeah that will start you know there's a way over there but since we can't actually unlock the thing at the other side let's not deal with it 
instead we come here and we f throw you throw jump down here ah watch out for this guy yeah it's that kind of place this is this dungeon is really not fun and of course you know we've got all sorts of we've got the blue blocks so we can't really deal with those sorts of things so we come up here and we kill this guy watch out yeah, I don't think you ever see just torch sconces throwing fireballs at you again. This is like the only place it happens. But if we come up here, we get a key. And that's quite useful. And there's not a lot. I mean, this room is going to be extremely important later, but not not right now. So we push that aside and we go through here. Oh boy, this is a fun room. And we get another key. And kill him. Oh look. Let's uh, use the... Yeah, and you want to be careful, of course. Because if when you if you use your sword, you, that thing will shoot at you. Now, the best way to do this is just to walk over here and step and open. And we get yet another key. So, after that, we want to go back like this. Yeah, that thing won't shoot at you if you use the magic cape, either. It's really nice. There's nothing over to the left, so ignore that for now. We come up here. And we run across here. This is a very... It's a big dungeon. And the whiz ropes make it seriously annoying. Oh, yeah, and those fireball throwers... Oof. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things in this dungeon that are just not fun. Ow, crap. Yeah, that wasn't... And then we have this fish. It, it, seriously, it looks like a fish skeleton. And now we've got three keys, and we've, you know, we've gotten a total of four keys and seen one locked door. You can head down from there, but there's no real reason to. It just... This whole dungeon has a lot of rooms that actually aren't particularly useful, so don't bother. So, now, ignoring him, we come down through here, and watch out for that guy, and we get the map. And we can go through this door, and we're back out here. And now that we're back out here, we can also see this blue block right there. Well, it's down. We don't have to worry about it now. So, we can come up. Watch out for him. Yeah, those, these, these, I think those are actually supposed to be bubble. We can go up there. And, but we have to get through here first. And you can come in here, and there really isn't that much going on. Uh, if you go up there, excuse me. Let's check the map here. Right, yeah, if you go up, you just come out into the room that you would go through if you uh, came straight down. And again, that's really not that important. So, we can come through here. Might as well kill this jerk because, you know, those are nice. Watch out for that thing. You know, as long as you stay oblique to it, like I am right now, you don't have to worry about getting hit. I think you can kill these things, but I, you know, at this point I'm actually not sure. Don't, don't worry about, I uh, don't hit the switch, you don't want to deal with it, just go through the door. You can get through there, I mean, if you want, you know, just dodge. You can, you can dodge the tiles, you can hit the tiles with your sword. It takes a lot of practice, and I don't think it's worth it. But what you really want to do to get up there is just light the lamps. There we go. Let's just kill this guy. And we get the compass. So that's pretty nice. And of course, you know, if you go left, you'll go back into that first room I showed you. But the door will shut behind you and you'll have to make the circle again. And it's not, not really that great. Okay, we got a whiz robe in here. Kill him. Ow. Watch out for those things. Though you really can't kill those jerks with anything other than your uh, sword. Yeah, also, you cannot kill 
the bomb slugs with anything other than your sword. But it can be nice to kill bomb slugs, especially if you are where, you know, you can't be hit by that stupid, um, you know, that, that stupid fireball sh shooter. Because, you know, bomb slugs are a pain in the neck. And then, of course, you can get that if you've used up too much. Because you're going to need magic upstairs. Boy, howdy, are you going to need magic upstairs. So, we come through here. Watch out, these rooms are full of whiz robes. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> like that. And we come in here, and there's this tiny little room. And Link, get his eyes, the hostel of the Elder. You must set tie fire to four torches to open the way forward. And of course, there were four torches in the previous two rooms. So, usually the easiest thing to do is that's a lot of whiz robes. <laughs> I didn't realize there were that many whiz robes in this room. So, let's just wait for them to appear and kill them one by one. And while we're doing it, we can push the blocks aside. You know, push, you know, two two in and one down so that you've got, you know, a completely and, you know, an easy path. Kill these guys. And we did see four that first time, so let's see if we can kill them all this way. Let's see if any more show up. Do do do. Yep. I'm not sure if you can kill them all, actually, at this point. I mean, so, you know, you might as well just push, push the blocks and kill a wizrobe as it appears to you. They're not that hard to kill, uh, you mean, as long as you're, you know, careful. You don't need the fire rod, necessarily. Yeah. Just watch out for those guys, don't let them hit you. It's pretty easy to do. If, if you've already done all the puzzle, you know, the b block pushing, it's easy enough to light all the torches before they go out. You'll have fur- there will be more complex puzzles in later dungeons with torch lighting. But for now, pretty easy. And the rumbling keeps going and going. We go back to this thing, and now we go into that other room, and there's a hole. And we drop down here, and we get the big key. And so, as you see, we have all three of the main you know, dungeon things, and the only way out of- yeah, so that drop is the only way in there. You can come through there. Now, let's see. We are here. If we go out the door to the right, we'll go back into that one room. If we come through here and take the warp tile, we're up here. So, we can... Ah, come on, dude. Gotcha. Watch out, because under those skulls are, in fact, the, the whirly gigs. So we come through here, and hey, we're back in this room. Which is nice, because, you know, we get to come straight down through here. And right through there. And, of course, all you have to do is drop off that ledge and come up on this one. Watch out for that guy. Now, to get over there before the stuff starts falling, you do that. And then walk. You don't even have to run. And you open it, and you get the Cane of Samaria. And what it does is, it, when you use it, it makes a block. When you use it again, the block will break apart into four uh, bits, basically, that go shooting off in the four cardinal directions. Just stop. So now that we have the big key and the dungeon item, we come through here. Watch out for him. Kill this jerk. And we can lift this up. And there we go. You know, because fairies are nice, we're going to be going through some interesting territory. If we come to the left, you find a big potion bottle. Yeah, like I said, they cannot rely on you having medicine, so even though they often tell you to bring some, you'll never be up a creek without it completely. Watch out, and now you see, if you come down here, as you notice, we still have an extra key, because there was at least one 
Uh, I'm pretty sure there was a door that we could have unlocked up there that we just didn't bother with. So if we come through this door, we get money. Not that we really need it, but I like money. So now we're going to watch out for these guys. Watch, watch out for those fireball spitters. Get the cane of Samaria on. Dodge the... F ah, dang it, I thought I was right where I could block it. Anyway, if you do that, you hear the door open. Because that switch has to... You have to keep pressure on the switch. So you can see how using this thing would have let you basically bypass a crap load of the ice dungeon. But we didn't feel the need. Ha. Ha, again. So, once again, full up on life. I guess you can use the Cane of Samaria against the final boss, though I see no real reason to. As far as I can tell, the only way to deal with that thing is to use the magic cape. But hey, you know, we can go up this way. There's nothing up here except you can get more rupees. And I believe you need... Let's see. Yes, you do need to hit that crystal switch. But there's nothing else you need to do. You, there is a place you can bomb to take you into a room that's full of rupees. But we really don't need rupees. So, let's kill this guy. And, of course, obviously we need to bomb this thing. Once it bombs, stay away from the hole because there will come a thing of a flight of those things out of that hole and if you're not careful they'll hit you so you come in here yeah see a bunch of rupees and an anti-fairy we don't need to deal with it so i will once again because like i said i don't think i'm gonna ow creep At, and they they will keep doing that every time you come through that door they will come flying down and get into you so there's almost nothing in this place. I mean, literally, there's nothing you need to do in here except don't get hit. <sighs> like that. But hey, you know, hit that. Ow, watch out for these jerks. Try not to get hit too much. See if we get anything. Um, let's see. I don't really need... I don't need... And you can just cut behind those. You don't have to get out into that spike's path. Luckily. Watch out for the fire snake. I'm just going to come through here. Uh, now I'm going to track down that anti-fairy. And... Ha! Now that was some timing. You might want a little magic because I found that one of the best ways to deal with this guy is the cape. Meet Vitreus. At least I think that's his name. And you can, of course. You need to kill all of his eyes and you've got to, you know, hit really hard. Stay over here so that his eyes can't hit you. Just keep you know, hit your sword button as fast as possible. He can't hit you with the lightning, no matter how hard he tries. So you stay to the... Well, yeah, I guess he can. But for the most part, it, it's hard for him to hit you with the lightning. Now, once he's out, he's a big eyeball. It's a Zelda game. Hit him, shoot him with an arrow. Watch out for that stuff at the top of the screen. It will hurt you. But for the most part, he's just going to keep charging you. You can hit him with your sword. Okay, I'm not dealing with this jerk. Let's just do that. And back to the arrows. Right, like I said, I mean, for the most part... <laughs> and there he died. Yeah, for the most part, you can just keep shooting at him. Try and keep him off your back, but he's not really that dangerous. The, but that gooey stuff will hurt you if you step in it, so you're pretty much restricted to the bottom of the screen for this boss fight. But as you can see, we really didn't do that much damage. You can use the magic cape as well to try and, you know, dodge, dodge his lightning attacks. Though, for the most part, they will miss you. Um, just make sure, you know, if he looks directly at you, that you move a little. Link, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. Ganon captured us because he couldn't break the seal of the wise men with his power alone. And then, using the wizard Aghanim as his pawn, he drew us into the dark world. 
After cracking the seal with our powers, he sealed us inside of these crystals. He then gave us to his loyal monsters. But Ganon didn't plan on you getting this far. Now, Princess Zelda is waiting for you inside of Turtle Rock. Please hurry. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so... And that, we're done. And, the, you know, the mire of misery is no longer storming. And we're just going to go right back. And as you can see, we're right trapped here. So we can just go up the stairs slightly. Yeah, apparently once you leave, the shells go back to their normal. So first of all, we're going to go get um, another potion. And because I'm still ridiculously loaded, I'm just going to buy another blue potion. And to be fair, Turtle Rock is a pretty... Um, a dungeon that's pretty heavy on magic use. So we're going to use the duck again and go down to Link's house. What we're going to do is run down, use the teleporter in the... Or not teleporter, the Dark World tile in the swamp. And then come right back here. Because before we do Turtle Rock, we want to get our next major sword upgrade. So, you know, hammer this. Watch out for the Octorok. Bye bye. And here we are, back in the lovely Dark World. Watch out for the picket. And so, we you know, come through here, go back to the. go back here. And as I said, up here is a bomb shop. You know, we hadn't bothered to go in there because, you know, all he had for us was bombs and we really didn't need to buy bombs. You can find them. But now he has something new and interesting. This is the super bomb. Much like the chest, it will follow you around. And if you press, you know, if you press A and try to run, you know how it is the bomb will detonate. You don't want that happening, so you can't run. Also, you cannot go up to the castle the same way you would in the light world because there's no there's no bridge there. You have to take this roundabout route. So just walk. Um, you know, at least with the... The chest is sort of a dry run for this thing because with the chest, you know, at least you could... Um, uh, you know, the chest, if you left it behind, you could pick it back up again. With this thing, if you leave it behind, it will explode, and you will have to go buy a new one. And there are a hundred rupees, so, you know, it's not really a lot of fun. Also, if this thing... I, I think if this thing gets hit with one of those Hinox's bomb... Bombs, it will go off. So you have to be a little careful. Not a lot, but a little. But if we come up to the pyramid, we see this cracked wall, which you would have found that you cannot crack with, cannot blow open with your normal bombs. The wall's too thick. And there you go. So we go in here. And we find, oh, this looks familiar. Yes, yes we will. So the first thing we want to throw in is our sword. So we throw in our sword, and up comes a fairy. Yes, I did. And, you know, much like the Waterfall of Wishing Lady, we get the Golden Sword. Yeah, it's, it's the level 4 sword. It is the most powerful thing. But we're not done yet. What do we throw in? We're going to throw our arrows. And up comes the lady again. And like the subtitle said in the last one, You are an honest person. I like you. I will give you something important. These are the silver arrows. To give Ganon his last moment, you definitely need them. I know I don't quite have the figure of a fairy. Ganon's cruel power is to blame. You must defeat Ganon. Well, I think you're beautiful anyway, so... You know, but... Uh, you know, sudden weight gain is not a nice thing regardless, so we will definitely be helping her out. And of course, like I said in the subtitles for the Waterfall of Wishing, if you throw in 
Um, if you throw in um, the uh, uh, an empty bottle, you'll get a free green potion, which can be very, very useful later. But we'll deal with that when the time comes. I'm not dealing with you. Ow. Okay, so. Now, our next stop is going to be Turtle Rock. But for that, we're gonna have to head to the light world. So I'm going to let's let's head to the light world, and we'll do this. And I'm gonna ta basically take us up to the mountain cave, and we'll leave it off there. So, haha. -ha. Yeah, nice try, guys. So, yep, we go off. We're gonna go off to the mountain cave and talk to the nice old gentleman and try not to get thumped. And... Okay. So, until next time, I have had a good time and I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching and I will see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>